The various kindred that make up each league are always in a state of constant economic expansion. As a result, the leagues as a whole have always had a great need for a rapid all-terrain scouting platform to enable their individual Oath Band's expansion. Made famous by its employee in the Oath Band's Uther the Destin and Dremok of the Greater Thurian League, the Sagittar was manufactured to meet these needs. Its six wheels enable it to cross and survive the harshest of terrains encountered across the worlds of the 41st millennium, while its heavy plating allows for it to take damage from the wilds of the front line equally. This speed, combined with armor, does not come without firepower, however. These speedy little buggies are capable of carrying a twin bolt cannon mounted underneath the driver on top of its choice of main weapon, that be it an L7 missile launcher with a Sagittar missile launcher attached, the Hylas beam cannon, or the Martyr autocannon. This versatility is further enhanced by its ability to transport Vord armored infantry models, up to five. As a result, it's not uncommon tactic among Oath Bands to field them in pairs with the full unit of warriors inside amongst the both of them. But with that, let's get on to the painting. Starting with a pre-primed sub-assembly here of Abad in Black, we will put on some Steel Legion drab throughout the entire uh, mini here. Uh, I'm using an airbrush, it doesn't have to be an airbrush, but it does have to go across the entire hull, so we're going to quickly get that done here. With that done, we're also just going to make sure to spray the entirety of these cockpits here, both the ones that contain the robot and the one that contains the human, and then just do a once-over making sure we haven't left any of the primer underneath visible. Uh, the armor panel's not so concerned with right now. Well, with the whole mini brown now, we're going to take some of the Strachan green here and start layering it on through all the armored panels, both the ones we have off to the side, um, as well as the ones on the mini here. There's quite a few and the paint's quite thin, so we're gonna have to go up through several layers to get a really strong um, tone there uh, across all the panels, which we are gonna see right now. As you can see, some of the panels with only one or two coats, you see a lot of splotchiness behind, whereas down on the bottom, uh, you see, you start to see the pan panels as they're fully toned up, fully colored, fully layered, and they look amazing. Now I've put some Agrax Earthshade in my airbrush here and just testing it out on one of the side panels here. I just sprayed basically all over just to get a difference in tone here. Again, this is the base layer here and I didn't want it quite so green. Uh, and we're going to repeat that across the entire mini, getting it in the crannies of both the green and the brown, um, as it will shade um, everything exactly how I want it. And we're going to do a really quick fast forwarding of that here in one second. With the living hell sprayed out of the chassis there, it's on to the final little panel here. Still a little bit wet, but that's what we got here. A really dark and really glossy kind of brown green lump. For the couple of panels that are white that you'll see, I painted them celestial gray base coat and then from the front sprayed on some Corax white.
Now, using an airbrush and some Death Guard green, I'd, I'd carefully spray the parts of the mini that I want to be lighter, parts of the green specifically that I want to be lighter. So, uh, at the top of the top of the armor panels here, so on the top of the hull, um, taking care to also keep it out of the crevices of the panel lines, I still want um, the shading and the depth um, that comes from the darker green underneath. Um, I don't want to get rid of all of that green, I just want to keep it where it makes sense and then have the lighter green um, sit on top of that. So very carefully throughout the entire mini, just going through picking out the green panels um, just exactly as I want them. You can do this with a brush as well, it just takes a little bit longer. It's important to know that any overspill here can quickly be fixed by using some Steel Legion drab on the brown bits and then going over with the wash again. We'll also repeat the exact same effect that we did on the hull on the various side panels I have off to the side. Angling from the top of the panel, trying to keep a little bit of the darkness near the edges and the bottom of said panel. Now we take a sponge and some Rhinox hide and we start basically just sponging the entire mini. All the panels we have onto the side as well as the main hull. You're going to want to do this mainly from the edges of panels, areas that are going to be taking regular damage, regular wear and tear, um, such as like the tops for example of this uh, hatch that drops down. Um, you can do this as much as you like, as little as you like, it really doesn't matter. It's all about creating a weathered effect that's you know, very easy to do, um, easy to achieve good results, but ultimately is as much or as little as you'd like. And now here comes the long, tedious part of this, this mini, is picking out all the piping and metallic underbits. The various, yeah, I don't know what you'd call it, the undersuit for the ATV just has all these metal roll cages and suspension thingies and doohickeys, and they all just needed a metallic trim. So, just spent a lot of time with the lead belcher. Um, Actually, I think this was Iron Host Silver. I'll have to double check that. Whatever the, the banner says is the correct color there. Um, and, yep, just picked everything out. It's a thin GW metallic, so multiple layers um, to get it right. And then once that was done, as I always do with any metallic, it was given a known oil wash. Sorry, not any metallic, but any steel slash iron style metallic. Um, I also went through and picked out all the rivets across all the body panels, both green and white, with a little dot of the exact same um, um, color there. I quickly picked out the black bits on each of the roll cages. They have these like little black bars, um, like you can see me do here on the final roll cage bit that needs to be finished and added to the mini here.
Well, and now we get on to the cockpit. So just quickly after having picked out the lead belts or details, the various metallic bits of the console that the uh, control panels are on, I use some steel legion drab again to pick out the undersuit of the Voton inside, giving his pants just uh, and part of his body just a nice uh, drab undercoat. As you can see here, again, doing the same thing on the top of the body, the parts that are fabric anyways. With that done, I used some Mornfang Brown to pick out the various knee and elbow pads on the pilot. With the brown of the body done, it was now on to the Strachan green undercoat for the whole uh, mini here. For just the armored bits though, is the kind of like top neck chest protector thing that the pilots like to wear. We're going to use two coats here as we're relatively thin. Once done, it would get an Argrax Earthshade wash before I used Death Guard green to bring a little bit of brightness to the armor just like I did with the hull. Um, moving on to the panels here, we use some um, Wraithbone to pick out the screens. So this is like kind of like a bright color, uh, kind of like an off-white that we're using to pick out the various screens of the control panels um, in the cockpits here. This is painted up off-screen the same way as I do any metal, um, and then picked out the buttons with green and red there. That complete, I was going to use a little bit of any color really, I used a little bit of green, um, I forget which green here, but just to create some little symbology and UI kind of like on the screen. Um, it doesn't really matter what tone you use because at the end of the day I use Tesseract green to kind of just flood these areas uh, and once dry it creates a really cool neon green screen effect. Now for the various metal bits, I used some lead belcher sprayed through an airbrush on basically all of them. This includes the landing gear, or not the landing gear, the suspension for the, the wheels, the antenna, the little roll cage thing uh, that you can see right now. Um, just gave that all a quick spray with lead belcher and then a wash with gnome oil as I do. For the wash with null oil, however, I quickly dry brushed everything with a storm host silver just to give some highlights to these areas and give them more depth before I would then go and add the shades. Tires were painted Abaddon black and then given a Thunderhawk blue dry brush to give highlight to the tires. Um, tires are kind of glossy rubber so they get a little bit of a, a, a highlight when light touches them. Um, once the dry brush was completed on all surfaces I would then use some lead belcher to pick out the hubcap and similar to all the other metallics here outside of gold, um, which I don't believe actually is in this mini. Uh, it got then washed with a null oil once it was dry. The cockpit class was quite easy. I just picked out the various rebar with or, or strut support bars, whatever you want to call them, with Abaddon Black before taking some Baleo pigments, this type, in this case Old Rust, and just dousing the ever-living shit out of it. Um, just kind of putting it all over the rebar, all over the, the individual class panels here. With 
with that complete, I'd take a Q-tip and also clean down my area, but also take a Q-tip and just kind of clean out the areas where I didn't want the pigment to be anymore. So most of the glass, as you can see, I just wiped it off and as well as the black bars because I really only want the dirt and the dust in like the corners gathered up against these harder to clean or harder to just quickly wipe areas. You know, you run your car through the wash, uh, automatic washing machine or whatever. Um, it's not going to clean your car nearly as well um, as it would be if you got into all the nooks and crannies. So I wanted to replicate that effect here. With everything assembled, everything was given a once over with an ultra matte varnish. With all that done, plus a little bit of off-screen wiring um, and LED work, we have my finalized Sagittar. Um, I really enjoyed putting this mini together. I really enjoyed painting it. It fits great in the whole force. I can't, I'm excited to get another one and try to see if I can do better in a year or now, uh, from now or whatever. But again, really pleased with this mini and I hope you like it too. Please like and subscribe for more and I'll catch you next time.